Hi everybody, it's Brandon with Spiderco. Uh, on today's edition of Education, we're going to be talking with Mike Janich and we're going to be getting into some pocket clips. Uh, Mike, I guess we've got quite an assortment of knives right here. Uh, these days, pretty much any folding knife you see has a pocket clip on it. Uh, that hasn't always been the case. Tell us a little bit more about the history of the pocket clip. Yeah, what we've got here is kind of kind of a historical progression of what's happened. Uh, when you go back to prior to Sal Blesser and Spyderco, basically yeah. prior to 1981, you had traditional pocket knives, no clips. These would carry in a pocket. Or what you had was a knife that would carry in a belt pouch. So you really had to make a commitment to actually attach this thing to your belt, yeah. carry it in a pouch. So all the old school stuff, everything that everyone carried like back in the 1970s and prior, that's pretty much all you had. And it wasn't really until Sal Glesser and Spider Co came along that we had the pocket clip. Yeah. So when you look at the early Spider Co knives, everything was produced from basically 1980 um, through most of the 19, uh, 1980s. What you saw was primarily stainless steel construction like this. And what you had was a stainless steel clip typically one position. So this is okay. an old school police model yeah. um, that basically gave you tip down carry only. And that kind of became the standard for, for a long time. Um, although we look at it now and say, wow, that's kind of old school. Right. At the time it was revolutionary. And yeah. it really is one of the defining factors of the modern folding knife, if you will. When you look at the capability to open a knife one-handed manually, mm -hmm. carry it with a clip, and then the option of having a serrated blade, those three things that really everyone takes for granted now uh, were revolutionary for its time, and we have Sal to thank for all of that. Yeah, absolutely. So you start with the kind of early, very early police model, and then what are we working our way into here? Well, as we, as we kind of look forward, uh, what we see is a, an old school harpy here. Mm -hmm. This is going from uh, stainless steel handles to G10 handles. Here okay. we still have a single position clip, so this is right side, tip down, carry only. And a lot of the early Spyderco knives were tip down only. Mm -hmm. um, and what you see is this is linerless construction, so there's no stainless steel liners in this. Okay. And what that means is that the screws that attach the clip to the G10 were actually like tiny little wood screws. Oh, so okay. they were actually more of an, an aggressive thread mm -hmm. that um, attached straight into the G10. Okay. Uh, worked fine. It's not the most robust way to do things. We ended up doing it differently later sure. on, and we'll get to that in a bit. But um, what you saw is as we progressed into different handle materials, we also had to adapt the, the clip mounting mm -hmm. as well. So from the G10, you kind of move into the early stages of the, the lightweight FRN, um, those types of materials. Yeah, what handle. we've got here, you can see one of these things is not like the other. Uh, this I brought out from my collection, this is a Gerber LST. Mm -hmm. When we go back and look at the pioneering uh, aspects of lightweight knives, uh, a lot of that goes back to Blackie Collins, the late Blackie Collins, who was a legendary knife designer. Uh, as always with Spider-Co, we like to give credit where credit is due, so yeah. I kind of brought this out just to, to give a nod to his contributions to knife history. But when you take kind of his pioneering efforts and then the way that, again, um, Sal and Gail kind of drove that from there, this is one of the early, early um, Enduros, yeah. and this has an integral clip. So what you've got is the lightweight construction. We were also pioneers in taking that mm -hmm. uh, style of construction using fiberglass reinforced nylon. What we did was not just be content with making a handle, we wanted to have that integral clip as well. Mm -hmm. So now what we have is uh, a knife that is super lightweight and also has all the advantages of clip carry. Yep, and we still get those in. You know, every week those are coming into the shop still. So. Yeah, what happens, these things last a long time when you carry it properly, when you use it properly, the clip will definitely hold up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people who, again, have been carrying these things for decades. Yeah. But sometimes you just you move wrong, it gets snagged on something, whatever. True. If that clip breaks, we can still repair these and we still do, as yeah. I said. Uh, we simply grind it off and attach a metal clip, screw that right into the plastic. Yeah. But uh, yeah, these things, a lot of these are still going strong. We have people at shows who will show up with these things and okay. show them off all the time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look what I got. Mm -hmm. The next step in evolution uh, came in 1998. So what we did was we wanted to have a reversible carry clip and it's something that was also more robust than the, the integral plastic clip. Mm -hmm. When you look at this, one of the downsides of it is uh, it's right side only. Right. And also you don't have any texturing on this side of the handle. So to have that volcano grip texturing on both sides, basically in 1998, what we did was we went with a metal clip and it had a barrel bolt attachment. So it's basically a, a two-piece bolt uh, that could be 
loosened with a couple of coins. Oh, the nickels yeah. fit into this really well. And what it allows you to do is to switch the clip from left to right side. And especially for something with a back lock mechanism, it made the knife truly ambidextrous. Okay. This happens to be um, a Pacific Salt, which is basically the third generation or the, the 1998 version right. of the Endura. Mm -hmm. We still use that mold for this particular uh, this particular knife, but as far as evolution goes, that was also another turning point as far yeah. as clip evolution. Yeah. <clears throat> so then when you move from there, you know, we moved into the metal clip. Um, this is also a metal clip, but much different looking. And this is a really interesting knife right here too, that's uh, adapted the wire clip. Yep, when you start looking at, um, like everything else, constant quality improvement. Mm -hmm. We're constantly researching and trying to develop new ways of um, solving the problem, if you will. So when we looked okay. at wire clips, one of the nice things with a wire clip is it gives you some lateral flexibility. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, again, the knife is in your pocket, you stand up, you bump into something, and it applies pressure sideways this way. Yeah. It just makes it a little bit more forgiving. Yep. It also allows you to kind of fine tune that, that strength of the clip. Mm -hmm. In this case, what we've got is a, another piece of history. This is a Dodo, yeah. uh, so original production Dodo. Um, and it, again, what we've got here is reversible, so with the wire clip, okay. we have kind of a barrel bolt type of, of uh, hardware, mm -hmm. but left or right side tip up carry. Okay. And again, a cool piece of history designed by Eric Lesser. Yeah. Uh, so these are more modern kind of uh, knives that people will be a little more familiar with maybe. Uh, this one right here, the military model. Um, as you look at the clip there, the position is different. The screws are kind of different, oriented differently. Um, you know, how did we get to that point? Well, the reason I wanted to include this one in our lineup here, if you will, is um, a lot of people have asked about what about a tip-up carry option for the military. When you look at Spyderco knives, of course, if you look either on the website or if you look uh, in the catalog, you'll always see as one of the key elements of our tech specs, mm -hmm. the fact that it will indicate is it uh, tip up or tip down, yep. left or right side. So it lets you know right off the bat, you know, what are my options mm -hmm. for that knife. So people have asked about uh, tip up carry for this. The reason that the military model is still delivered tip down, the primary reason is when you think of this in your pocket, if you were carrying tip up, right. when you reach in, I've got decent sized hands, mm -hmm. when I reach in and draw this, my thumb is not going to be anywhere close to the opening hole. Yeah. So what I'd have to do is reposition the knife to get to that point to where I could actually open it. Yeah. Whereas if it's carried tip down, when I reach in, I'll draw the knife, I might have to reposition it and turn it a little bit in my hand, but then yeah. I have that ability to open it fluidly from there. That's interesting because a lot of it you think would just be personal preference, but I mean, that's a big factor, but there's a lot of practical application to how you position that as well. Exactly. When you look at clip design, there are a lot of things that go into it. I look at it as far as kind of three basic factors. Mm -hmm. One is, what's the size of the overall knife? Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, when you have a larger knife, it's gonna limit how much of the knife you can grip when you draw it out of your pocket. Oh, sure. You also look at the clip position itself. So when you look at where the clip is positioned on the knife and what it allows you to, uh, essentially how it allows you to access the knife as you draw it, tip right. up, tip down, how deep is it, all that type of thing. And then you look at the size of your hands. Mm -hmm. Because if you have smaller hands, if you have uh, shorter fingers and everything, you look at your hands in relation to the size of the knife, it's also going to be a limiting factor. So what you got to do is kind of play those three different elements and find a balance that works for you. Okay. So moving from the military, you've got your Tenacious here, um, some slight differences in those clips just as it kind of evolves, um, positioned similarly, uh, placed similarly on the knife. Yeah, but the big difference here, you notice that this is a one one position clip only, so right side tip down carry. Mm -hmm. What we've got here with the Tenacious is it is drilled and tapped for all four positions. So what okay. you have is tip up, tip down, left or right side. So any, you know, ambidextrous, any way you want it, you can get that clip to your specifications. Exactly. So in this case, what you have is the ability to carry the knife any way you want, mm -hmm. literally up any of the, the four possible positions, but it's still a liner lock mechanism. So yep. you have to, again, weigh that if you are left-handed. Sure. You have to then be able to operate the liner lock lefty. Yep. Um, so again, when you're choosing a knife clip, uh, the clip carry options also have to be weighed against the lock style, sure. whether the lock operation is ambidextrous as well. Yep. So again, uh, kind of decision branches as you're choosing a knife and what's best for your needs. Okay. Uh, so from here we have the Drunken. Um, this one looks kind of different from anything else here on the table. What's the story there? The reason I wanted to show this one is what we do when we work with custom collaborators, in many cases, if they're putting clips on their knives, which most of them do, mm -hmm. they also have that stylistic element. They may have a, a signature look for their particular clip, or they may have a, a particular material or something. We try to be as faithful as possible in representing that. Yeah. The whole idea of doing collaborations is to essentially take 
uh, custom designs that are, you know, kind of an elite, expensive thing for most people to get, mm -hmm. and say, let's democratize that a little bit, make it more affordable, more yeah. accessible to everybody else, but try to maintain as many of the key qualities as possible. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the clip very closely replicates what you'd find on uh, Dmitry Sinkovich's custom version, so it's as faithful as uh, possible as, in, as far as replicating the style of right. his custom knives. Yeah. Um, and talking about other custom designers, we've got the Shemp Bowie right here. Mm -hmm. um, that also has a wire clip on it. And kind of how is the progression of you know this wire clip on the dodo here moved along to the Shemp Bowie here? This is kind of the the edge of a deep rabbit hole that a lot of people <laughs> like to crawl down, which is the deep pocket carry. Yep. So when you look at the wire clips on these two, what you've got is this one is going to carry a little bit higher in the pocket. Essentially, the wire clip as it comes down the base extends out toward the butt end, mm -hmm. whereas this one wraps under. Underneath. So this is uh, a deep okay. pocket carry. And again, what this comes down to, for some people, they're not in a hurry to get to their knives. Sure. It's, it's more of a casual cutting tool. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not first responders. They're not looking at the knife as a personal defense weapon or mm -hmm. anything like that. So the idea of getting it out quickly is not a priority to them. It's fine. Yeah. So what they want is something that's a little more discreet. So when you put this down in the pocket, it's going to be almost completely concealed within the pocket. Mm -hmm. You have a dark colored clip. And because it's a see-through clip, you also see the material in the uh, pocket showing through. Yeah. So it could be a pen, it could be anything else, really nothing that stands out that is going to call attention to it. Mm -hmm. The thing is, with a deep pocket carry clip that you do want to carry the knife for rapid access, for whatever reason. Sure. What that means is, again, you're back into that situation where if you reach down in there, are you going to get enough of a grip to where you can draw that knife and open it quickly. Yeah, yeah. So if it's so well concealed that you can't draw it well, <laughs> then you've kind of defeated the purpose. Right, yeah. So again, it comes down to personal preferences and why you carry a knife in the first place. Yep. It's a balancing act. Yep. So what we have here is, here's a Matriarch 2, and then this is actually a waved version of the Endura. Oh, here. the Endura. Okay. So yeah, the closed position look very, very simil similar. And you say, okay, well, these are basically the same handle for both, mm -hmm. which is true. Uh, they have skeletonized stainless steel liners that becomes the anchor for the clip screw. So when we compare that to, uh, again, going back to the old school stuff like the G10, it's a machine screw that screws directly into that stainless steel, gives it a really good purchase okay. for the, the screws. Yep. But what you find here is with an Emerson opening uh, mechanism here, this hook on the back of the mm -hmm. blade, even though you have the option of tip down carry, it really doesn't work well with that particular feature. Right. So even though you technically have the option for tip down carry, if you want to use this thing the way that it's intended, so as you draw it from the pocket, it's going to hook and open, then obviously tip up carry is going to be your right. preference. So if you've got that wave on there, there's really not not if a you lot set of usefulness up, in changing that position Exactly. Around. If you set it up the other way, then obviously it's it's not going to serve its, its purpose. Sure. Uh, what this also allows you to do, again, when you go back to like the personal defense side of things or just personal preference, one of the things to bear in mind, this is typically set up for right-handed carry. Uh, so as this comes out of the pocket, it'll open this way. Yep. If you were wanted to set this up for what's called reverse grip, mm -hmm. where you'd be coming out and gripping the knife this yep. way, you simply flip the clip to the opposite side. Okay. So as it comes out of the pocket, it would come forward this way, and then you'd end up gripping it in reverse grip. Yeah. So the, the clip carry position, also what you want to think about is what grip do I want to achieve when I draw the knife. Mm -hmm. So you could actually fine tune mm -hmm. uh, things to, to be able to facilitate that as well. Um, so this is a similar knife here to the Matriarch, but there are some key differences here in how this clip is constructed and kind of the, uh, so the design the, behind this as the well. original civilian. This is a unique knife because it's one of the few we make that only has a single stainless steel liner. Okay, yeah, you don't see that too much. Yep, so the clip anchors into that stainless steel, so that's what uh, allows the clip to mount securely. But what you have is tip up or tip down right side only. Okay. So again, you have to pay attention to the details. Yes. We do have a lot of different variations, a lot of different options. And to kind of bring it all full circle, yeah. that is, so if we look at our kind of old school police model here, we see a straight stainless steel clip, mm -hmm. we see a single position here. Yep. Current production, we have four position clips. So it's yep. drilled and tapped here. here. Same thing on the other here. side. Yep. So even when we look at our classics, constant quality improvement still applies. What we're trying to do is to make them more versatile, more usable, uh, be able to, to meet the needs of a broader audience. Yep. So even in maintaining classic features, we still will update that and just make the knife um, again, as, as functional and as versatile as possible. Yeah, it's really interesting to see that progression. I mean, seemingly small things can make such a big difference in, in that kind of design. Yep, the devil is in the details. Yep, no doubt.
Well, when you think about the pocket clip, it seems like a simple thing. Uh, maybe we take it for granted these days that it's on just about every night and it has so many different positions, but this was a really interesting dive into kind of the full progression of the pocket clip and how it came to be today. So thanks everybody for joining us and we'll see you next time.